All right, we're back. Uh, we're going to take a continue to take a look at weighted average cost of capital here. And I'm just going to do another little quick note on understanding uh, beta. Uh, best way to think about it, and we're referring to this specific stock, this company Nova Chemical, its beta is 1.40. So when we consider that one is the market as a whole, uh, a number that is positive above the market like this is indicating that this there's a real strong correlation between the movement of the market and the movement of Nova stock in general. But in this case, what we're also what we also need to understand is that the stock is likely to move at a rate that's 40% more than the market as a whole. So in an up market, Nova is likely to move at a rate that's 40% higher than the up market. In a down market, it's likely to move at a rate that's 40% lower. It's going to move down faster. It's going to move up faster. Just try to keep that in mind. So that's why it's such a critical piece to understanding uh, the cost of equity. What is the, it's part of the risk factor in understanding an equity investment. All right, we're going to look over at this section of the Excel form and I've managed to capture the whole thing here, so you'll see what we're, what we're basically looking at. Uh, the goal is to arrive at this, the weighted average cost of capital, what it is, you know, what it is costing us to uh, make an investment. And the things we look at are, we start at the top here and we look at debt. Um, this company is indicating that it has no short-term debt. And basically what is generally agreed to as short-term debt in the accounting world is anything that will be paid off within one uh, reporting period. So often people think of a reporting period as a year. Uh, businesses don't always run their, uh, their books by calendar years. They, they, uh, they have their own setup for that quite often, but it's a, it's a period of time, generally a year. Long-term debt uh, can run out. There, there's no there's no clear definition of how far it can run out, but it's basically considered debt that is not paid off within one year. So the total debt here, if we're looking at this, is one is uh, uh, one point four billion dollars. If you do your math right, um, so that's the total debt that the company has, and it's arrived at uh, simply by doing a very simple equation. Uh, B4 plus B6, so short-term debt plus long-term debt equals total debt. All right, we move along. We're looking at shares in the company. The thing we're trying to come up with is the market capitalization number. And this is basically the price per share times the number of outstanding shares. And shares outstanding uh, very specifically refers to shares of the company that are in the marketplace, that are owned by somebody in the marketplace. Uh, so that's the number there. There could be other shares that are, you know, uh, that are in, tr in the company's treasury account, or things like that. They would not be counted here. Um, so this is the the market capitalization, what the firm is worth uh, in the stock market at a given point in time. Um, we're going to break that. The next thing you look at is percentage of debt. Uh, the percentage of debt is arrived at by doing a calculation of the the total debt times the total debt plus the market capitalization. So that helps you arrive at the, uh, the debt number. Uh, percentage of equity is arrived at by 1 minus uh, B12, which is the, the debt number here. So give you some sense of uh, the breakdown here. You're seeing that uh, this company has a very strong equity position compared to debt. So in our final video, we're just going to go right down in here and talk about WAC specifically, and we will get to that in a minute.